Thank you. Welcome, everyone. This is the weekly TSC call. As you all know, this is a public call. Everybody is welcome to attend and contribute. However, there are two requirements. The first one is to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed and that you so all know by now. And the other part is the code of conduct, which governs our behavior. With that done, uh, let's get with that uh, further ado, let's get started. First, I want to get us kicked off by uh, reminding you of uh, three different things that are going on. We have the developer newsletter. They are always looking for contribution. Um, there is the ment mentorship program that is going on. They are looking for proposals. So you still have until March 11th to do so. If you're interested, please go ahead. And the last piece is the IBM Globjet Global Forum was uh, announced and uh, the call for proposals has been issued and you have until March 12th to send proposals. Now, with that said, I think we have one more announcement. Helen, this is your cue. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Helen Garneau. I am uh, here as a now as a contractor uh, taking over for um, Jessica uh, uh, while she heads out on family leave for a few months. So I'll be around, you'll see me uh, leading marketing calls and um, doing some of the other tasks that uh, Jessica uh, typically does uh, until just about until the end of the summer. Um, one of the things that I, uh, she sort of left me with one of the projects that I'll be taking over is the updating of the white paper, the Hyperledger intro white paper, it is in need of an update. So we're looking to put together a task force uh, to get that done. I know that there has been a couple of names that have been kind of sifted uh, to the top of the list that I'll be reaching out to, but if anybody else would like to participate in that effort, uh, please go ahead and reach out to me uh, directly. We'll also be updating that greenhouse image um, describing uh, you know, the, the picture representation of of the greenhouse. So if anybody is uh, interested in contributing or being a part of that effort, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. So yes, thank you, Ellen, and welcome to the team. I mean, the greenhouse image, as you call it, uh, has been subject of quite a bit of discussion and feedback. You know, a lot of people think it's not quite uh, adequate anymore. And uh, this is the opportunity for people to help out and get a better one. So thank you for helping us move forward on this, on this issue. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, let's move on. So we, today, as I said in my email, we'll have a presentation from the Telecom C group. Before we get there, let's, I just wanted to remind people of the quarterly reports. When I looked at it a couple of days ago, I was putting the agenda together. I realized that quite a few people had not reviewed the Indy and Euroha project review uh, reports. And so I haven't actually checked before the call if the situation has really improved. Um, is there any questions about any of those? And this is a call for action to the TSC members to do review the reports if you haven't done so yet. Otherwise, the, we are, the borough report is due. I think I saw Shun on. So Shun, if there is any chance we could have a report from the borough project I know we didn't have any in the last quarter because uh, Silas had announced that there wasn't going to be much activity to be expected. It seems like you guys have actually changed quite a bit of code. I looked at the insights and activities on the repo, quite a few lines of codes have changed. So it'd be good to know what's up and uh, so if a report could be put together and submitted, that would be appreciated. 
and uh, otherwise i think that covers the reports unless anybody has any comments or questions all right hearing none let's move forward and start with the presentation so i'm not completely sure who is actually taking the lead on the presentation um whoever is hyperledger community if you could please give me host back i'd really appreciate it <laughs> sorry about that right let, let me do that so david uh who is going to present I, let's see, I was just looking through the participant list. It looks like Vipin and Dharman haven't been able to dial in yet. They're based in India, so the timing may not be ideal for them. But let's see, I see Nima. Nima, I don't want to put you on the spot, but would you be interested in sharing? Uh, sure. I think uh, Vipin was planning to prepare some, uh, some slides. So if it's not a problem, uh, let's wait for a bit. Uh, if they, if, if they don't joined in a, in a few minutes, then I can actually kind of uh, pop in and. Okay. I did it. just email them and let me, yeah. If maybe Arno, sorry about that. If you could maybe. No, nah, that's all right. I think we can, uh, yeah, we, we can pick up another item before and then uh, switch the agenda around a little bit. Great. Nice. great. I'll try to figure out where Vipin is. So, all right. So while we are waiting, Let's talk about um, the, the first agenda, uh, I mean, discussion item on the agenda was again, this notion of common set of labels for repos. And uh, last time I brought it up, there was a bit of discussion, but I realized that it was okay, but we didn't make any decisions. There is no action. So I don't know that we have made any progress. And I was left, I mean, we, I know that the, I mean, GitHub has some, like, um, by their default labels, such as good first issue, apparently help wanted. It's not clear to me that the semantic for those labels is always, well, good first issue, I think is pretty clear, but help wanted is not always clear. And it wasn't clear to me whether in, for those who use Jira, whether we could use these exact same labels. I saw that there is label with good dash first dash issue. I don't know if it's not ideal. I don't know if an, an ali alignment is possible. Does anybody know? If there is one that we should all agree on is good first issue in my opinion. We, we keep talking about how, you know, what are the, the things we can do to help contribution, you know, from newcomers. And this is one, I think, is to be able to consistently, when people are browsing through the different projects, find how they get started if they want to contribute. It's, if the TSC tells me what they want, it's pretty easy for me to fix those labels everywhere. And then I... I have a question after, I have a, a, a question that is very close to this, but not identical. So whenever you, you guys- Are you aware that. of any limitation on spaces in the labels? I was wondering if that was- that Jira, I, the, Jira does not yeah, support spaces in labels. Ah, that's what I thought. Okay, so we're kind of stuck in with two then, because uh, so I think maybe we have to live with that. You, you could um, first issue with spaces on GitHub and with dashes on Jira. You could migrate to GitHub issues. <laughs> nice try, right? <laughs> Let's not <laughs> couple those two things, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand the motivation, but. Um, and the help wanted one there is the um, as I'm as when I was browsing around, I realized that you know some people think of this as oh this is kind of like good first issue type of label, and um, and I've seen projects where they say oh this is a, this was like to label something that's kind of tough 
and they're like, oh, this is going to require quite a bit of help. So if anybody could help with that one, that'd be great. And it's clearly not intended for a newbie. And so if, you know, it, we can't, I mean, it, it's bad to have the two possible semantics. And I would be happier if we could agree on which way it, which way it is. Given that we have good first issue anyway, maybe we can just say, if you're a new contributor, just look for that label. Good first issue with spaces or dashes, and that's it. And help wanted, I don't know if we want to define it everywhere or not. Um, but I, I, I would think that, you know, we wouldn't label that as something necessarily for newbies, but more for something that, you know, that as I was saying, the use case is you actually need resources to develop something or fix a bug that's, you know, will require quite a bit of time. So that's my proposal, but I want, what do people think? It's a little thing that I thought we should agree on and just, okay, let's agree on using those two labels. And I don't know if there are others, please tell me, but in terms of, you know, growing the community and making it easier for people to help and contribute, I think these are kind of essential. So, any reactions? Dano? So, <clears throat> my experience with GitHub labels is those really are the two universal labels, and everything else is highly dependent upon a lot of people's process. Some people make labels for bug priorities, and we don't have a standard hyperledger bug priority or security label set. Other people might tag security. That might be the, be the only one worth adding, but I think we get that for free with GitHub security issues already. So, um, I mean, unless we're going to get more nitty gritty into defining release processes, I think this is, you know, the most success we can get with the least amount of effort, just, just these two. All right. Tracy? Yeah, so I put in the chat, um what GitHub defines each of the different labels to be. So um, I think basically we should stick to whatever GitHub defines them to be. Um, so they, besides the two that we've been talking about, they obviously have a number of other uh, default labels that they provide. And I just think that we should use them and use the descriptions as provided uh, on the GitHub site. We have to have a label to indicate a bug. I'm a bit surprised by that one. <laughs> Some people use GitHub issues as a design workflow too. So it might list a scrum task. I, I noticed that we have uh, a couple of projects that are doing exactly that. Uh, they're using a plugin. I think it's Cactus to, to run their scrums. All right, but uh, I think this, uh, this is a good set otherwise. I'm happy to go along with this with the caveat that, you know, when there's a space, we need to allow for a dash if you're using Jira. The only one, I guess, is the good first issue that's multiple words. So that's not so bad. So can we agree on that set and just record that and tell everybody? Because I mean, to make it worthwhile, we have to have at least the documentation be updated and reflect those and say, hey, we're using those tags, those labels. Look for those. So my proposal is to adopt this set that Tracy just put on the channel. I see seven people have already said plus one. Is there any objections? Oh yeah, we can do the thumbs up like Bauer is doing on the on the Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. 
I see a lot of blinking going on. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Arun. Just a question. So um, let's say we agree upon this. So how do we enforce it? Or is, is DSC going to follow up on that? Are we going to look around? Hey, I found an issue which has not marked or are, is it just a recommendation that we are giving to projects? It's a recommendation, I would say, and, and Rai volunteered to kind of help implementing the labels by going around and, and setting them. So I, I'm happy, <clears throat> I'm happy with that for now. Well, if you go with the defaults, I'd like that because then I don't have to do anything. For GitHub. <laughs> right, for the place where people are doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody objecting to this? No. Anybody wants to be recorded as abstaining? No. Okay. Well, this is passed. Part. Thank you. Part. Uh, no, sorry. I was just raising my hand to get rid of the other emoticon. <laughs> I don't know a different way to do it. Yeah. All right. So that's it for this. And thank you. It's a small thing, but I think it's worth it. Uh, so how are we doing with the speakers on the Telecom SIG presentation? I still didn't see Vipin in the... Yeah, I'm reaching out to him and I haven't heard back from him either. So something must have come up. I mean, Nima and I can give you a quick update, but I, I've, as we've said on the list, I mean, I think Vipin does have some interesting information for us about, you know, his experience trying to get a lab going for the group and running into some problems. So I don't know, we could either reschedule to next week or Nima and I could just give you a quick up, heads up and then Vipin can come and share his thoughts separately another time. Yeah, let's do that because I mean, now we have, pretty much reserve the agenda, a uh, large part of the agenda for this. I'd rather we cover what can be covered now. And I'm happy to have a follow up, but it can be shorter then. Okay. Nima, maybe I... Uh, that's all right. I actually managed to put together a couple of slides now. Oh, thank uh, you for that. <clears throat> no worries. So I will try to... Well, that's good job. I mean, in the few minutes we <laughs> gave you... Yeah, well was mainly just uh, grabbing some screenshots, right? Uh, That's fine, just... thank you. Uh, let's see if I'm gonna be able to uh, hopefully this will work. Uh, yeah, so can you tell me what do you see yes. now? Yeah, Hyperledger Telecom Sync. All right, <clears throat> so my name is Nima. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a researcher in Trinity College, Dublin. Uh, I joined the Hyperledger Telecom SIG since pretty much the beginning of its uh, inception. Uh, so what, what we really do in Telecom SIG is, is a group of people really, uh, mainly from uh, kind of academia, uh, the, the active partners, uh, but also some partners from industry, from IBM, uh, some, and then some other smaller uh, companies. So we're, we're really trying to figure out what are the trends out there for telecom, and then bring in some expertise from our own research, our own uh, kind of projects into the, into the group. Uh, so we were initially, uh, kind of focused on publishing solution briefs or, or the white papers. Uh, so we first uh, published the optimizing wholesale uh, intercarrier settlement uh, solution brief. And our recent solution brief is the decentralized ID and access management for IoT networks. Uh, so, and this one will be published uh, in the coming week, I guess, uh, uh, David can, can give you more information on that. Uh, so what we realized uh, publishing these two solution briefs uh, was that, so these are quite quite a bit of a, a big project, as in uh, there are multiple people involved in it, uh, often 
from multiple institutions, uh, industry partners or academics. Uh, so sometimes they would they would take more than a year to complete uh, because of the back and forth edits and so on. Uh, so what we tried to do was to since last year uh, with the help of of, of David, uh, we started having uh, uh, guest speakers. Uh, that was quite actually helpful to uh, get the. Get get our, get get our uh, voices heard uh, outside in in uh, like even outside the hyperledger community. Uh, so uh, some of these uh, speakers they they haven't really worked with hyperledger much. They've been working with blockchain in general, uh, and kind of we are trying to both attract their audience. Uh, so if if they work with other projects, so they can uh, kind of publicize these talks and then we would get attendees uh, from those communities and kind of hopefully grow the grow the telecom sig. Uh, so in average we would have uh, between 25 to 30 uh, people in these talks, uh, which is a, a good number because our really the core of our group is not bigger than six, five people really. Uh, so that's uh that was a that, that's a good achievement i guess and we've been having uh some more interest in the group recently uh so this is uh this is a good model i'd, I'd say uh if uh i mean not not to say we should be a role model for all the all the other special interest groups but this could be something interesting for other special interest groups to to uh to look into uh, the other things have been blog posts. Where we've, we've had more than this. I just didn't have the time to put the screenshots here. Uh, so these are the blog posts on the on the Hyperledger website. So uh, this is also a good uh, kind of way of getting our, our voices uh, a little bit outside the, the circle of the, the, the Linux Foundation people. Uh, that being said, uh, we had a couple of more things as well. Uh, we were trying to uh, release a couple of proof of concepts uh, from our industry partners, uh, so from IBM and from other groups. Uh, so I was actually a kind of uh, uh, working with those proof of concepts. So we did uh, take in these uh, kind of proof of concepts from these industry partners and then uh, kind of modified them to some extent and added a little bit, like kind of made them more uh, user friendly in terms of uh, kind of adding some documentation and so on. But unfortunately, uh, we, we couldn't really get them into the Hyperledger labs, uh, the GitHub account, I mean. Um, and Vipin is not here, but Vipin was, uh, I think, our middleman between uh, the Hyperledger Labs and the Telecom SIG. So uh, it was just we we're looking to see where was really the 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 problem there and how we can actually get access to the to the Hyperledger Labs. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much from my side. Uh, I would I would love to hear the feedback from from you. All right, thank you. And Nima, thanks for that. I can give a quick, I mean, I have heard Vipin share some thoughts with me about the labs process and I can, I can. I mean, he obviously would have more details. I can share a little bit about what I know, but first, thank you for putting that presentation together really quickly. Uh, appreciate that. And you're right. I mean, I think a lot of the stuff the Telecom SIG has done is a good model for other SIGs. The guest, I have seen the other SIGs do guest presentations, but in general, that's a really great way to recruit for the group and bring new people in. You know, we always see a bump in uh, mailing list subscriptions and then people who join that meeting and then future meetings whenever we do those. So definitely a good thing to do. Uh, uh, the blog post, I think the group again has been really great about sharing what you're doing, but I think the main thing that you're doing that, you know, could be a really model is the publication part. You know, I think the two papers, to your point, the papers take a while to produce, but I think those are a nice uh, deliverable, uh, really, um, you know, adds a lot of value. So I think those those are definitely all great. For the 
for the, my understanding of Vipin's challenges with the labs thing, I think there were two. I think, you know, as we've talked before on these calls, he did struggle finding a sponsor for each SIG that I've helped try to get a lab going. That's always been a challenge just because they're coming in to the community, you know, from a different you know, spot and haven't really had a chance to build relationships yet with the people who are sponsors. So that's always been a challenge. Um, but we did find end up finding, I helped him find a sponsor. And then I think he just had a couple of issues and just was not getting responses. And then it was just easier to go set up, you know, GitHub repo somewhere else and just use that. So um, I think it was largely just, uh, again, I think maybe a matter of relationships, didn't know where to go necessarily to ask questions about uh, the lab and was having some problems, I think getting, uh, I think it was a permissions issue. I think he was trying to add some people to the lab, but it wasn't really straightforward how to do that. And then uh, basically just tried to go somewhere else. Uh, but I I've, I am trying to find Vipin. We'll try to get that information from him and share it with a group in some other format, maybe over the, the TSC list. So thank you. I mean, we appreciate the feedback and, you know, it was definitely part of the feedback we got from uh, what Tracy gathered, uh, reaching out to the SIG chairs is, you know, was there was some friction uh, in the lab process, which surprised uh, those of us who are lab stewards, because from her point of view, it seemed to work pretty well. The one point that I know is hard is the sponsor. And uh, just so that everybody knows, we have the proposal being worked on the, to eliminate sponsors. It's not done yet. It may not happen, but this is something that has been uh, discussed last week and the uh, proposal is being worked uh, to, to put that before the TSA. That would simplify a little bit the creation process and the kind of situations that you described. Is there anything else, any comments or questions from anybody? I mean, again, the, the, the point of these presentations, right, as a quick reminder is, you know, we've all come to the conclusion that there is too big a gap between what's going on in the SIGs and the rest of the community and the projects, especially. And so, technically speaking, uh, no pun intended, the, the uh, the SIGs report to the board, not to the TSE. And this has created maybe a gap between the two. And so we're trying to fill in the gap by having the, the SIGs, you know, reaching out to them and offering to lend an ear, if nothing else, to, to, to learn more about what they are doing and, and what can be done to improve, uh, can be done to improve the collaboration between the two sides of the house. So if there is no comments, yeah, just, I think uh, just, can, just a quick note yeah. on that. Sorry, yeah, go so, ahead. Uh, I guess, yeah, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a quick note on, on, on that. So yes, I guess uh, the, the feedback loop from the six is missing, especially with the, with the, really the, the developer community uh which i guess should be kind of a part of the tsc if i'm not wrong so i mean i guess we could give you guys some good input uh, in terms of really because we are we are really in, in in touch with the people who are actually kind of uh struggling with kind of the the, the performance issues let's say uh that is there with with hyperledger products they can give you good feedback about uh say uh, like the, the 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 next talk we're gonna have in the group is gonna be from uh, researchers from Queensland University, so that's gonna be really on the scalability issues of blockchain and how they are struggling with IoT use cases, uh, kind of in 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 blockchain sector. So uh, yeah, I guess kind of creating a new channel uh, between the SIGs and uh, and the technical part of the, the project, especially with developers could be quite helpful, I guess. And the, the Hyperledger Labs could be uh, kind of an entry point for that if, if we can kind of uh, make it a little bit easier for people to, to contribute code there. All right, thank you. And, you know, just so you know, Tracy did 
come back to the TSC report and what she had uh, garnered from the discussion with the SIGs. And uh, this is, we have a list of items who are going through. The, there is actually one, I mean, we talked about the labs earlier and trying to address some of the friction there. And then we have uh, other points, one of which is on the agenda actually after this. And so, and you know, I very much welcome people like yourself to attend the TSC and participate and help us go through this. You know, we tend to uh, make decisions on their own because we don't necessarily have all the parties around the table, even when it impacts others. So uh, I think if you can uh, participate so much the better. And Tracy, I think likewise, yeah. Nima, ha oh, sorry, go ahead. Tracy has been waiting, so. Yeah, no worries. I mean, um, I, I was just going to really ask Nima, you know, what he thought that uh, the TSC could do to help the SIGs, right? Um, is there something specific? I, I don't think, Nima, that you were in our, um, our call when we had that discussion. So, you know, was looking to see if there was any specific kind of feedback that you had of uh, uh, what can the TSC specifically do to help out the SIGs? Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, that that's pretty much uh, what I thought. I mean, like creating a channel between uh, the core Hyperledger uh, kind of developers and 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 uh that the SIGs could be quite useful like for example even even between the SIGs uh so that 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 I don't think if that kind of connection and channel exists between uh between the SIGs well so if there was uh let's say a bigger community for all the SIGs to come together and then uh once in a while and then then report to the to the TSC and then Kind of create the feedback loop. That would be that would be useful. And to build on what you're saying, Nima, about having that connection. I mean, Arno, thank you for that invitation for the group members to come to the TSC. But I think likewise, it would be interesting, perhaps, for TSC members to go to the upcoming uh, presentation that Nima said. See if that's valuable. See if there's anything interesting in terms of you know requirements, for example, or technical feedback that we're you know, that you could feed back into the TSC or read the paper that they're publishing, you know, maybe that would be interesting. You know, maybe we could have a, a two way, uh, uh, you know, yes, telecom members could come to the TSC, but maybe if there's somebody who's interested in going there. And that feeds to maybe one of the ideas that Tracy shared about mentorship, you know, if, if perhaps there was somebody on the TSC who was a mentor for that group or other groups that would be help create that back and forth channel as well. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Anyone else? So on the agenda, the next item is very much in that uh, space, right? Uh, one of the items, I picked one from the list that uh, uh, Tracy brought up and uh, it's, it's referred to as SIG request for support. And if you look into it, it very much follows what we were just talking about. It's like, okay, you know, how do SIG people can uh, find, you know, help uh, contributors and, and sometimes just they want more information. They're seeking information from the projects and they don't have that. I think there's a general problem in terms of communication. I mean, setting up those presentation where we invite the SIGs to come to TSC is a small, you know, it's actually an attempt to try to reconnect those, those uh, different communities, but uh, it doesn't go quite far enough, right? We, we, there are other items that were reported that are also that fall into the category of, you know, lack of information communication between the SIGs and the, the, the projects. So I, you know, I think at this point, the, this is pretty much an open, uh, invitation for ideas and proposals on what we might be able to do to improve the situation. Is, is this issue significantly different than uh, communications in general with the projects from people maybe just outside who are trying to come in? I mean, 
are we are we solving two different problems or is it really one big problem? What's your opinion? How would you answer your own question? I don't know. Well, I don't necessarily see that it's different, a different problem per se than people coming in from outside. But maybe I maybe I I'm would missing. agree. I would agree, but I think and that's why I kind of tie it to this problem of documentation, also information, and obviously what we talked about at the beginning with Ellen, you know, driving the project for the greenhouse, revamping the greenhouse image, you know, also can help there. I know that one of the issues that were reported from the SIG was even, you know, confusion at that very level and, and mapping between projects and use cases and that kind of stuff. So I, I would tend to agree with you, Mark, that, you know, it's a general problem it's the, the difference that I see is that, you know, it's hard to get input from the community at large that we don't know that we would like to attract. But the SIG, they're actually well-known, you know, entities. They are, you know, people like Nima today. We can reach out and say, okay, let's engage in discussion and, and see what would help you. And, you know, at least in, in having this kind of like filling in the gap in terms of information sharing so that they're more included and then don't have to struggle feeling like they're in a different world altogether. So I think they, it's fundamentally the same problem, but we have a, it might be easier to tackle if we focus on the six needs and as because we can talk to them and then as a as a side effect, I think the, the larger community would benefit from solving the six problems. Right, and I, and I agree with that. That was sort of what I was thinking, but I, I want people to be cognizant that this is really solving a couple different issues. Yeah, you know, I think that's a good point. Anybody else? All right. If not, we're done with the agenda per se, but there's plenty of issues that are dangling. And I wanted to highlight that. We've opened quite a few items over the last several calls, uh, calls since the beginning of January, basically. And, uh, and it feels like we're not making enough progress between calls to be able to close on those items and, you know, <laughs> I don't blame anyone. I'm, I'm as guilty as everybody else. Um, but it'd be good to be able to make progress between calls so that we can start closing on some of those issues and make actual progress because opening issues is only the very beginning. We have to close on them at some point. Um, not to put you on the spot, Dano, but I saw you actually updated the badging proposal. Yeah, it was the two things I discussed a week or two ago on um, changing the resolution to the three step um, where the middle is discussion and being less formulaic about how the CSC has to do it. And I also went through and I updated, I added the, uh, um, the renewability to each of the uh, different badges. And I guess the question I have is I'm not sure what the next step from this is. Do I make this into the formal process? Do I bring this into CSC and we vote on it? Do people still have opinions on it and think it needs to be worked out, so. So my, my take on this is that if, you know, now that you've updated it, I want to give people another week to have a look at the updated version and then we can just vote on it. And then once it's voted, you know, we can, uh, we can do the, the GitHub PR for me is more like, a, you know, just mechanical to get it in the final text, but, um, the decision we can make it based on the proposal you put together. Cool. Arun? Hey, um, I see we've been joining the call, so maybe we just take a couple of minutes and ask specific questions. Ah. Yeah, we've been. Okay, let's let's make sure we close on the so. Anybody else on the badging proposal? You've all heard me. Please have another look. 
And uh, let's see if you have any other comments, please do so on the wiki. And uh, otherwise I'm going to make it, if it feels like it's stable enough, I'll bring it up next week for uh, as a formal proposal for like a decision by the TSC. Hopefully we can get there. If, of course, if, you know, people have more comments or, you know, not comfortable with the proposal, then we can keep working on it. All right. So I don't see any hands raised. So, um, yeah, Vipin. Hey, hi, sorry for the confusion. I thought this is like confusion with the time zone. So yeah, sorry for the delay. Uh, sorry, I know what that's like. Um, all right, so Nima took it, I mean, he actually did uh, amazing given the circumstances. He put, he managed to put together a few slides and give us mm -hmm. kind of an overview of the activities that you guys have been having in the SIG uh, Telecom uh, SIG. And then, you know, since you're now here, is there anything you would like to uh, say specifically? Yeah, some suggestions like, um... That's what we are planning in 2021 is more on like uh, to develop more reference architectures so that uh, so that this can be used by other telecom operators, right? So um, I, I don't know how how TSC can help in these kind of things, whether or any suggestions that should be uh, approached to more standard bodies like HC or, or, or GSMA or some more and how TSC can help us into outreach to more standard bodies so that we can give more RAs from this six. That's what I understand from like, like if we say in CNCF six, like most of the time did more, more focus on architectures, right? Instead of use cases. So 2021, this is the plan as well. Like we are adding this, that can we develop more of uh, our reference architectures and the uh, and I don't know how uh, from last two years, we are, uh, as a SIG, we are we are uh, filling this mentorship programs, but not getting, and I don't know why, but uh, we are not getting any feedbacks as well. Like you can work on this or something. So if we can get some feedback so that we can improve and again, uh, participate in mentorship programs as well, that as a SIG, that will be also good. And also we want to uh, listen from TSC as well that uh, what do you think that should we change something, should we add something or any suggestions from you guys? All right, so in terms of, you know, um, where you should do that work, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned standards, that seems quite a navy process. So I think for now, if you want, if you guys want to work on some kind of reference architecture based on use cases that you guys are interested in, you can do that. And if you want feedback from the TSC, you're very welcome to prompt us, sending an email to the TSC and say, hey guys, look, we're working on this. You know, we'd appreciate some input or feedback if you have any. Uh, I mean, the, the channel, communication channel is being weak, but, it's, it is there and it is open. Anybody can send email to the TSC list or join these calls at any time. And if you, you know, want to highlight any work you, you guys are taking on and uh, want to have input from the TSC, I invite you to do just that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And any suggestions for the mentorship stuff? Yeah, so the mentorship, I mean, this is one of the questions we, we've talked about uh, in terms of the, you know, in general. Uh, well, we don't have an answer yet, but uh, as I was saying before you join, uh, we, you know, we've, we've got quite a bit of feedback from the SIGs that Tracy uh, gathered and, uh, and reported to the TSC that we are going through now uh, to try to see what we can do for each and every one of those issues that were raised and to try to improve the situation. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you so much for the plan. Tracy? 
Yeah, I had a question about mentorship and I wanted to ensure we were talking about the same thing. Are you talking about the official mentorship program that Hyperledger um, has? Is that the, the mentorship that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, and then is it, is it that you are putting in projects that you want people to help with and you're not getting responses back yeah, from so, the D's? So last year, that? yeah, last year, uh, last to last year, we wrote one solution brief on, uh, um, and then on intercarrier settlements, and we had some code with us which we contributed to on uh, on uh, on Hyperledger Labs. But uh, that's what we want to continue with that, so that we need a more, let's suppose, students or something. So we wrote one pro uh, one project like as a mentorship, as a say in in mentorship program. But um, of course, there are a lot of things. But at least we sh if, if we get some feedbacks, like please improve next time this way, so that we can apply next year. So we also applied the next year, but again, the same process. So if we get some feedbacks, like uh, like what kind of uh, programs you guys are accepting or something so that we can improve and again apply so that we get at least some uh, programmers or, or a student so that uh, we can continue our solution brief into the real implementation as well. Okay, and I, I know that the mentorship program is currently looking for projects. Um, I see that there's only one submission so far for the year. Um, so it would be good to, to have you submit. Um, and then I don't think Min's on the call. Um, you might wanna reach out to Min and see if there's any specific feedback on previous sorts of mentorship years and submissions to see about getting information. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, that's, that would be a good thing to do indeed. Just to ask if there is any uh, feedback from the staff based on the previous years that could help applicants have a better proposal. But thanks for clarifying, Tracy. I, I, that shows that we need to be careful with the terms we throw in. When we start, you know, overloading the terms, it quickly gets confusing. We had also talked about mentorship in terms of like getting, you know, pro people from the projects involved in different activities, labs and the SIGs as more like mentors who could uh, help. And that's what I was, I thought it was about, but so, yeah, it's a bit confusing. So uh, Arun is on next. Yeah, it's, um, right. That was the same question which I also had wanted to clarify because our earlier understanding on mentorship was different from what Vipin just said. And um, quick comment to Vipin also. So if you, um, I mean, there are other groups within within Hyperledger where, uh, like for example, there are working groups and there are regional chapters who do organize events. And if you do have uh, requirement where you want people to solve a specific problem statement, then please do reach out to them as well. And specifically, since you are um, also in India and then we are connected, if you can send me out uh, your requirement and we do have a event hackathon coming up next month, I'm happy to share it across through India chapter. Yeah, sure, sure. I will share. Even last year, I we gave one problem statement on my pleasure in India chapter. Right. Yep. Thanks, Vipin. I'll connect you after the call. Sure. sure. Thanks. Thank All right. Thank you, everyone, for this. Anything if, else? Have any additional information to share about challenges you had getting that lab set up? I know you just referenced the lab, but I, I know there were also some challenges you ran into. Yeah, I remember uh, we did this in 2020. So, yeah, we want to add NEMA in in as a as a one of the contributor, but anyhow, we didn't get success, and then we quit all these hyperledger labs kind of things. Because I remember when we wrote this solution brief for IoT, we did all the coding in our in our public uh, repos, not on hyperledger labs, because of problems we faced last year. So. Uh, till till then, we didn't try it even after that. That because of that period, because uh, we contributed some code for Hyperledger Labs, but again, 
after that we never uh, went back because of problems we faced so i don't know i means from last one year i i never checked even that whether it's improved or not but yeah if it is improved yeah we will definitely want to try that well i'm sorry to hear of your bad experience that basically pushed you away or drove you to go do something else um in terms of adding people normally that's a pretty simple process that uh, rise happy to jump on and do quickly. I, I can only imagine there was a problem of communication, the request not getting to the right person. And, you know, in general, we use the, the, the lab's um, rocket chat channel. And, you know, all of us, towards and Rai, uh, who helps with all the repo setup and all, are on it and, pay attention to what's going on there. So if you want to give it another shot, I encourage you to try. Uh, yeah, sure. I, you know, I'm and sorry again, you had a bad experience. My observation, and I know this has come up in Tracy's discussion too, and I, I had said it earlier, but just now that Vipin's on the call, I'll, I'll repeat it. I think it often does come down to relationships. I think when people create a lab and they're known already in the community when they show up in a place like the labs channel, you know, they can get a response. But I, I often think when unknown people show up or not as well-known people show up, they, they sometimes do uh, get overlooked sometimes when they ask questions. And I think that might be the issue because I think the people coming from the SIGs are less known in the technical community. So I do think, I mean, I have pointed people to the labs channel, for example, and I think, you know, sometimes they do or do not get responses. I, I would like to think that that's not why, but uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe we're guilty of that. I don't, not that I know of, but you know, for sure at the proposal level, we get proposals from all sorts of people we don't know. For me, it makes absolutely no difference. The the chat channel is often because you you know, it's easier when people know you, they tag you, then it's it gets to your attention much faster. I think that can play a role, but I don't think there is any, uh, you know, intent to ignore people we don't know. I'm just speaking for myself, but I'm sure it's true for everyone else, everybody else. Hot. Yeah, so I want to agree with David and actually go further. I think this is not just a problem in labs. This is a problem in all of Hyperledger, and pretty much all of us are guilty of this to some degree, um, where we sort of respond faster and better to to github ids or or people we know and this is not entirely without merit it's like you know for instance arno if you were to submit a pr to to one of our you know code bases or a code base where i was a maintainer it is probably likely that it is a higher quality uh than someone completely random off the street um, but this also does discourage contribution uh, and, you know, it, it sort of risks um, people's attempts to get involved being black holed. But I think this is a much bigger issue than just labs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can agree with that because I can agree that, you know, I've been complaining at least within the fabric uh, project, you know, uh, that the maintainers, there's, sometimes they fall, and I don't know that it's intentional, but it does feel like there is some collusion going on between maintainers who will quickly, you know, review and merge each other's uh, PRs. And, and they tend, they will ignore the others, you know, uh, more, they're more likely to ignore the others. So there's definitely some of that going on. And I think that's a something that I, for sure, I've been fighting within the Fabric project. And, uh, you know, I've been saying, hey, you should review the PRs in the order they are submitted first. And there may be cases where, well, okay, there's this one that's urgent because there's a bug and you need to fix it. It'll take priority, but otherwise, you know, it should be first in, first out. And, and mind you, I have had people say, you know, when I started talking, is that, are you saying we should take them in the order? I'm like, well, 
yeah. <laughs> I was a bit baffled that it was a question for some people. Anyway, we're those, a bit off track, but thank you for that feedback though. That, that Those stats are available in LFX. Like it'll show you the average uh, time to merge or review. And yeah. Dano? Yeah, oh, but I just won't have tell one thing before we if... close the meeting and request. Yes, please. So I saw that Aries submitted a request to go active. Will that be discussed at next week's meeting or is it going to be further down the agenda? Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. I wanted to, to add that to the announcements and or to, to remind people. If you haven't seen it, uh, Stephen posted the announcement on the TSC list. And uh, I do request everybody or invite people to go and have a look. Come, you can comment, it's on the wiki. And uh, I do expect us to start discussing it next week. And uh, it will be formally on the agenda. And then I don't know if we'll be in position to make a decision yet. I noticed that I haven't had a chance to look in the details of the, re the, the application for moving to active status, but I noticed there were things that were still under work. So maybe it's not completely ready yet, but if there's any feedback, that you guys have, I encourage you to let them know already so that they can address them without further ado. So thank you, Dano, for bringing that up. All right, so on this, I'm happy to close the call with one minute to spare. So let's call it a day. Thank you all for joining.